Today, we are gonna show you how to use PropStream real estate investing software to not only build your cash buyers list, but to grow it and to skip trace additional cash buyers. And I want you to stay with us because learning what is possible with today's technology, data, and services is critical to the, to the success of your business. Hi, my name is Tim Randall with REIClub.com where you can learn how to invest in real estate to replace your income and live the life you've always dreamed about. We call our tribe the unemployables because they know they weren't built to have a boss. I'm very excited today because I have Burton Alicondo with PropStream Real Estate Investing Software and Data. Um, he is a senior product specialist with PropStream, has been working with them for the past seven years and knows this software tool and the, the data processes inside and out. He's a master at it and he's going to show us how to find our cash buyers. So Burton, thanks for joining us today. Absolutely, Tim. And thanks for having me. And I'm really excited to show you guys our system and how one can pull all sorts of cash buyers from our records. So without further ado, are you okay if I share my screen? Yes. Let me, before we jump into that, though, for people um, that are not aware, we've already done a demonstration video with Burton before on how to find motivated sellers. So you can search that on the REI Club website. Just look for PropStream Motivated Sellers or go to our the REI Club YouTube channel. It's a great video on how to find motivated sellers. And then for those that are not familiar with PropStream, Burton, can you kind of do a quick overview of all the different things that PropStream can do? Yeah, so we're a two-part system. Our system allows one to do what we call lead generation. You're gonna be able to search nationwide and look through county records, MLS records, bankruptcy records, um, pretty much distress motivated lists. Um, and from there, you'll be able to use our 150 different filters to craft your own motivated sellers list or buyers list. So that's one aspect of PropStream is go in any market and build your sellers list or buyers list. And you get up to 10,000 leads a month. Now from there, you can export our data or we do have some additional features like you can skip trace, which is gathering a contact information like a landline, a cell phone or an email. And we also have direct marketing. So you can send a postcard to those uh, motivated sellers. You can do a ringless voicemail or an email. And then the second part of PropStream is analyzing a specific property. When someone calls and they're interested in selling, you can type in an address. We'll give you all the details we've collected, like the mortgage information, the bankruptcy that might be recorded, the pre-foreclosure information that might be recorded. Uh, not only that, but you can actually run comps on our individual properties as well. So you'll have the ability to use public records or MLS records like an agent would to run comps and look at photos and even print out reports that have those photos as well. And so that's kind of what PropStream does in a complete little nutshell. Wow, that was a good overview. All right, so I'm, I'm ready when you are. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, in. most definitely. So today we're gonna to be focusing on um, how to use PropStream to find some really, really great buyers. So when you first log in, um, again, we're gonna zoom in on your market, but just know that you can search in any market nationwide. So. Uh, let's put me on the spot, Tim. Do you want to shout out an area and we'll just build a buyer's list in that area? Okay. How about Watauga, Texas? Watauga. How do you spell that? <laughs> W-A-T-A-U-G-A. -A -A. All right. Watauga, Texas. There it is. Oh, there's a Tennessee one too. <laughs> so here we have uh, Watauga, Texas results. And the first thing that, again, if you watched our previous video, make sure you do that. Um, as I mentioned, we're going to isolate all the records that we've captured in that area. So for this example, we're looking for cash buyers. So what we're going to do is we're going to first click on the cash buyer records here. Now, here's something that you have to note. This right here is all the raw cash buyer records. These are all non-owner cash transactions, but that are unfiltered, meaning we're going to see transactions from as early as a few uh, weeks ago to if we don't filter this list, we can see transactions as far back as 1993, right? So if you're looking for an aggressive cash buyer, uh, here's what you need to do. Go into our filter at the top. And from there, here are some just best practices to find your cash buyers. Now, everyone has different preferences, but here's typically some of the best practices. When looking for cash buyers, a lot of investors like to get rid of those really, really old records. So they'll go to the last sell date and give us a starting point. For example, they'll say, you know what? I'd like to only find the cash buyers starting the beginning of this year. So they'll go to January 1st, 2020. 
and click on that. Now they'll leave the second part blank. What that means is look for buyers from January 1st, 2020 or later, meaning up until today's date. So as you can see, simply doing that, we now went from 899 records, essentially 899 postcards or phone calls you were gonna make to just 80 and 80 that are really, really fresh within the last 11 months in this case. Now, other best practices are what I call apples to apples, right? Oh, actually, before I get there, another best practice with ownership info is what type of um, cash buyer are you looking for? I know some of us have a preference of uh, making sure we speak to corporate offices. Some of us have a preference of just speaking to individuals. So if that's the case, you can select individuals and just look for individual buyers in your market. And finally, something that has been added recently that's very, very, very powerful is this right here in the ownership info. It's numbers of properties owned. PropStream has the ability of being able to identify the tax address of the cash buyer and tying in any other properties that are associated with it, meaning we're, we're going to be able to tell you how many properties that buyer owns. And this is important because this is just preference and opinion, but I believe there's a difference between a cash buyer who only owns two property, right? This to me is maybe a buyer who's just getting started versus a cash buyer who owns maybe 10 properties or more, right? This is a, perhaps in my personal opinion, a buyer that is, you know, has deep pockets, they cash flow their property. So they buy, they probably rent it out. And for me personally, this is probably a buyer I would love to build a relationship with. So numbers of property owned is big. Again, it could be a number of four, a number of five, you make that choice there, but definitely want to make sure that this buyer has at least more than one property under their belt. Second is apples to apples, as I was mentioning. If you have a contract locked up and this contract is a mobile home, then make sure that you're looking for cash buyers that are buying residential and then go down and click on mobile homes, right? Or if it's a single family property, click on single family. If it's a condominium, condominium, multifamily, so forth apples to apples, because you don't want to be promoting your single family property that you have on contract to buyers that are simply just buying apartments, right? Um, they're going to just ignore you and they're not going to be interested. So this is the most important part when looking for cash buyers. And again, these are the best practices going into the ownership info, looking for very, very fresh buyers, ones that are very recent, you know, your choice on individual or corporate office. I will say this, uh, individuals, we can skip trace which I'll be showing you in just a second. And then numbers of property owned, followed by the property characteristics that these buyers are buying. Now, once you're done with that, go ahead and hit close and your results should now be on the right-hand side. So as you can see here, we went from 899 potential phone calls and postcards I was gonna send to 13 that are specifically geared to the type of contract I have on file or I have on, uh, on, on contract right now, property I have on contract, which is single family. And I need buyers that are within uh, what to, I'm not going to butcher that. Right. So this area of Texas. Um, so with that said, the next thing that you want to do, if you're curious, as you can click on the details of these properties and dive into the property details, which is what we were discussing last time in our overview. But uh, the important part here is that we have a cash sell tab for these records. So here you're gonna be able to see the sell date, but most importantly, the buyer's information and the buyer's mailing address. You can now can get a hold of that buyer. Um, another thing you can do, because we live in an, a, an era where there's so much technology, is we can check off our results, add it to a list, either an existing buyer's list of ours or create a new one. So we'll call this Tim's buyer's list. And from there, once we save Tim's buyers list, we can actually go into the My Properties area and export this data. Or since we just saved it, we don't want to export it from the My Properties page. To export it, what you're going to simply do is click on your buyers list, check this off and hit the export button. Or if you want, you can go to New Campaign and select Skip Tracing and we can now skip trace this list for you. So choose the item that you want. Is it just phone numbers or emails or both? And from there, hit next and you'll be able to place your skip trace order. Usually it takes about five minutes or less to get your results. When you do place that order, your results will be 
waiting for you in the contacts page here at the lower left hand side. And from there, you'll be able to click on your skip trace list, check them off and hit that export button. And that's the first way of finding very, very, very aggressive cash buyers in any market throughout the United States. Tim, did you have any questions there before I show them the other secret lists that we have? No, that was really cool, especially the, the number of properties owned and being able to match the specific types of properties. So you make sure that your buyer's list matches what you're doing. That's really powerful. I thought I might throw you about, you know, giving you a smaller market, but. <laughs> <laughs> hey, That's I like that curveball, but yeah, I mean, our data is very, very aggressive in most markets. I mean, we're not perfect, but in most markets, we're very aggressive because we have 15 years of data collection and uh, being able to isolate characteristics with cash records together. Uh, is, that's really what makes us, you know, who we are today. And so I appreciate those kind words. And you know what? Let's now, uh, you want to throw me another market? Curveball me again? Well, I won't curveball you. Let's just do Houston, Texas. Okay, let's do Houston, Texas. So tons of records, right? Tons of records, but this time I'm going to show you the other way of finding investors through a list that's only found in PropStream. And this list is called our flippers list. And it's only found in our filter here at the top. So in our filter under quick list choices, we have what we call the flippers list. And let me explain what this list is. Um, the logic behind flippers is that we have found individuals that have bought a property and then within 24 months or less, that property is now back on the market, meaning we believe that they're a flipper, right? Someone who's either bought a property, they've rehabbed it, and now they're just putting it back on the market to make profit. So that's our flippers list. And here are all the flippers in this market here. Now, there are some best practices with the flippers. Like for example, you can make sure that the flipper is flipping a certain type of property let's say residential and single family property. Another thing that you can do is you can go into the ownership info, right? And see how many years of ownership. Now here's a, a big thing is that years of ownership, I believe is important because some of these uh, flippers will sometimes just buy a property and then not do anything with it and then flip it within like a month or two later, right? Um, some of these flippers will buy a property and spend an extended amount of time on that property and then flip it, right? So you can do things like uh, what I normally do in my market is look for a flipper that at least has owned the property for a year or more. That way I know that they've worked on that property for an extended amount of time. But in some markets, we know flippers can get it done really, 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 really fast, right? So we can do things like, hey, you know what? I want a flipper that bought this property from January of this year to let's say June of this year. That's a good time frame, June 30. And now it's back on market. So they bought it and then now it's back on market as of today. So here are the 298 properties that were bought in January to June. And now they're listed uh, from July 1st up until today's date. Or if you want to specify the listing date, you can do that. You can go into the filter and say, you know, I want their property to be listed right after June. So we can say July 1st or later. Not only that, you can say I also want it active or even pending. Why pending? Because once it sells, they're going to need another contract and that's going to be your contract. <laughs> so this list is a very powerful list. Again, we're looking for people that are buying and flipping properties, our flippers list. We're looking for residential single family flippers. The listing date of these properties. So right now they're on market and their listing date is as of July 1st of this year or later. And the status is pending, meaning someone's about to buy this property and this flipper is ready for a next project. Or you can do active as well. You know, look for the ones that are just putting their property on market now. But the last sell date was this year, right? They bought it from January 20 or January 1st of this year to July. Or, I'm sorry, June. So they bought it in that first six months of this year. And then, so they might've bought it in January. They might've bought it in February and then did all that work. And then now it's being listed in July. And so here are our, are our flippers. And the reason why I love this list is for two reasons. When you go into the property details, you're going to be able to see the flippers information. 
in the cash sale. So we'll be able to see who the buyer was and the seller. And then you get to see the MLS details. You get to see who the agent is that's representing that flipper. And that's big, right? Because here's a, a, a question I always ask. It's a rhetorical question. I always say, hey guys, how many flippers do I have here? And everyone says, well, Burton, you have 225. And I say, and that's incorrect because I do have 225 flippers, but I also have 225 agent information. And guess what guys, agents know more than just one flipper. So Steven here, when I call him and say, hey, Steven, I have a contract. I think it's great for a flipper. Do you know anybody in the market? Steven's probably gonna give me this company's name as well as eight other flippers he knows in the market as well. So guys, this one's a really big list because you know the flipper and you know the agent. And with that said, again, we can check off this list and then create it, uh, create a marketing list. We can add it to an existing flippers list of ours or a new one. So Tim's flippers list. And then when we save that again, it's gonna go over into our My Properties page. You can export it there. You can skip trace it. Now with the flippers list, this is what I like to do before I export it. I go and click on my flippers list. And before I export it, I go right over here to the edit column feature. So you can actually customize your layout and add things to your export. One of the things I like to add is the MLS status. I like to make sure that my export includes the agent's name, phone number, and email. And maybe the brokerage's name and phone number as well in case. But when I hit apply, now it's gonna add that information. So if I go to the far right of my list, check this out. When I export this list, I'm not just gonna have the owner's name and mailing information, but I'm gonna have their agent's name, the agent's phone number and the agent's email, right? So again, my 225 flippers has now multiplied by 10 because most of these agents know more than one flipper, right? So when I export this sheet, your Excel sheet will have the flippers um, names and again, the, the agent's information. And again, guys, this list too, can also be skip trace, right? So we can skip trace uh, the information. But again, if you guys want to save some money, uh, definitely try to get a hold of the agent if you're willing to work with them there. Just some tips there. But that right there, guys, is what I call um, our flippers list. It's only found in our system because of the aggressive nature of what we do with the logic and the data that we collect nationwide. Wow. Uh, I'm almost ready to get back into... <laughs> All right, disconnect this video. I got to get to work now. I love that. <laughs> I'm not quite there, but if I was, that's uh, that's extremely powerful. Thank you for taking the time to share that with us. I really appreciate it. Yeah, most definitely. Is there anything else that you want to cover before we start signing off? No, um, you know, as I mentioned last time in our last video, um, you guys want to essentially treat PropStream as ultimately um, a place where it's like, a buffet of data. You know, you can come into our system and use our filter to do all sorts of things. You know, find buyers that own multiple properties to find your aggressive buyers. But that same filter can be used to find motivated sellers, right? Find me someone in a pre-foreclosure who has five other properties or more too. So if you understand that our, our system wasn't designed to feed you a specific list, because that's what most providers do. Here's a list of ours go ahead and only choose that list and then use some of these filters. Our system was more geared for you to just go in there and pull what pieces of data you'd like to craft your own motivated sellers or buyers list. So that's pretty much it guys. When you approach PropStream, approach it in that sense that you can actually engineer your own list and not have to choose from the 18 categories we give you. Okay, awesome. Burton, thank you again. And I also wanna thank the REI Club Unemployables um, for joining us. We know your time is valuable and we do our best to respect that by bringing you valuable information, tools, and resources that will help you in your business. Um, if you have a specific tool or service that you would like us to demonstrate, please drop us a comment, let us know. And this is Tim Randall with reiclub.com and Burton Alaconda with PropStream signing off. Take care and good investing.